Hello. In this video, we're going to take a little walk through the ravine before all the leaves come out. And I'll be doing this walk again for those of you who are homebound. And we'll look for a few things. Look at biodiversity, food chains, food webs, um, different relationships that organisms have with each other in terms of competition, predation, parasitism, symbiotic relationships like, uh, ah, sorry, I'm watching where I'm going at the same time. Anyway, I'll point out a few things as we go. And in case there's a coyote, I have a big stick. All right, oh, missed these ones. Uh, our provincial flower, you should all know, is the wild rose. And this is what's left of them from, this is what's left of the wild roses from the fall. And if we take a look at this, this is called a rose hip. If you boiled it in some water, you'd have some tea. It's very high in vitamin C. Rose hips from the wild rose. Now, can we see any thorns? Uh, yeah, there we go. We can see that the branches themselves are quite prickly. Now, those big old trees are poplars. They are very easily identified. The bark is kind of a waxy whitish green but the bottom of every tree gets all thick with this old bark that looks wrinkled. And, uh, these cottonwood trees are the ones that put all the poof and fluffy fluff out in June and make you sneeze. And they are very resistant to fire. You can see that they tend to grow near a valley where there's water or a ravine or a gully but their bark is so thick that if a fire goes through, often in a prairie fire, the tree would survive. The outer part of the bark would burn, but the inside of the bark where the liquids still flow would stay viable. Now there used to be a squirrel here. Let's see. Oh, let's talk about human impact on the ecosystem. So this was supposed to be a creek and the creek had to be diverted and part of it is put underground. And we also have structures that we build as humans. So here we see a fence. That's mostly to keep you from sneaking through the culvert to go to McDonald's. We see the train tracks and we also see this creek going through. So humans have done a couple things. In order to allow the creek to flow when the water is high like it is now, the culvert, which is that metal circle, goes right underneath the train tracks and allows the water to flow. There's something in it. Hello? I'm hoping that's just a big chunk of ice that fell and is melting. I'm gonna go on now. Hello? Going through here. The creek is so high. Oh, and we already see little bugs. Well, you can't see them. The water is full of life, particularly a creature called Daphnia. Oh, I see some ducks over there. Now, do you see that nest in the tree right there? If you look at what that's made out of, it's made out of 
sticks or how comfortable is that for those babies? Well, that's a magpie nest and that's just how they make their nests. It's not nice and soft and smooth, uh, but can you imagine using only your beak to find all those sticks and stick them all together? That nest has been there for years through snow and rain and sleet and winds and storms and it still survives. Okay, I saw some ducks, but I think they're on the other side and we can't see them right now. Going through here, checking for people. Do I see any people? Okay, I'm going to hope that that noise was a big chunk of ice that melted off. So, what kind of birds might we see in this ravine? Well, magpies, crows, I've seen blue jays, ducks, haven't seen geese, but it wouldn't surprise me. Robins, little chickadees. Oh, something's been here. Mm. Hmm. So, this is evidence that a creature has been here without actually seeing the creature. So, what would this be? A bear? No, it's not a bear. It's either a dog or a coyote, like I said. And I got my stick. I would suggest you don't do these kind of walks alone, but I did tell Schlegel I'm out here, so if anything happens, um, he knows where to come look. What we do see all this oh there's some lovely lichen all right when we think of everybody's role to play in an ecosystem like a little ravine like this that orange stuff we'll see it also in gray and green and white that is a decomposer so as this tree rots and decomposes the lichen is able to take advantage of that and uses the rotting tree as nutrients, as well as the sun for photosynthesis. This is home to a lot of little beetles and bugs. How do I know this? Well, in a few meters, I'll show you evidence. Oh, this is lovely. There's some moss. very soft and photosynthetic. And again, it needs the moisture, but it can also grow on stones that are sitting for a long time. If the stones have been pitted somewhat from storms or the elements, uh, that can also grow there. So all the green we see here is moss. Hmm. Other evidence of human impact. Well, there's this. You might say, oh, well, that's garbage. Yes, but what creature would it impact? And how? So if you can imagine a bird trying to eat that, um, it might fill up the bird when the bird's actually not getting any nutrients from it. So it might make the bird sick, it could kill it. Here's beautiful, beautiful log with that moss growing and the snow just left, but the moss is there already. And if you can, in the water, little bugs, there's a water strider on the top and inside I mean underneath that's a little hard to see oh that's not a water strider uh, looks like some tiny little fly but as I look at the water I can see that inside it's just full of full of life right now
Look at that, right in the middle. Getting some sun. Wow, must have been a surprise if that butterfly hatched a couple days ago when it was so cold. I told you I would show you evidence that I know beetles have been here. So here, this is not some secret message that somebody wrote. This is beetle trails as they crawled underneath the bark when the tree was alive. Looks like they got lost. Oh, and there's a little ant. Wagner's built on an ant hill. <laughs> That's why we always have ants in the school in the science wing. Just a big ant hill. Oh, here's that crazy nest I was looking for. Okay. There. So this tree had blown down a couple years ago in a big storm. And it just gives you a really close look at what a bird nest looks like. Look how all those branches are stuck together. Imagine having a pair of tweezers, like a beak, and somehow you had to get these sticks and put them all together. Sorry, I thought I heard something. So that the nest stays put for your babies. And inside, really, oh, well that's nice. It's a little softer. See, they have some little softer padding inside there. Well, you can see. For the babies. Some leaves and smaller twigs. That's where they had their nests for the eggs and that's where the babies hatched. I'm always thinking I'm hearing things. Oh, here we go. Now look at all that debris on the ground. All that sawdust. Well, what made that? This dead tree is likely home to some kind of bird or squirrel. I'm not going to get too close, just in case they don't want company. But often dead trees where a branch falls out and makes kind of a hole, it's a nice place to start making a home. Back to the trail. Oh, this is lovely. There's a nice close-up of a couple different colors of lichen. Ah, how cute is that? So those plants are busy taking down that tree, eating it up one little bit at a time. Here's another little swamp. Water, of course, runs down, collects in these small depressions. Now, it won't be long before you start hearing frogs croaking here. There's also snails, slugs. I don't know about salamanders, but for sure I have found snails and slugs and earthworms like a foot long, uh, called the dewworm. Super creepy, it was disgusting. One kid found one once, it was like a foot long. Could have had that in a bun and called it a hot dog. Oh. Okay, now what kind of tree is this? And these are the leaves. And it keeps its leaves all year long. They're 
covered with like a waxy coating to keep them from drying. And the new ones, which haven't quite happened yet, are very soft. You'll also notice that the inside of the tree is kind of like empty. What? Where did all the, the greenery go? Well, if you think of it, photosynthesis requires light. So anything inside the tree near the, the trunk doesn't get a lot of light. Oh, I just saw something super cool. all these fungi growing along the tree. And again, tree's dead, might as well eat it. Take a look at those shelf fungus. Super cool, all the way up. Very nice, very nice. Now, does anything grow under the tree? Oh. This looks like from a predator and prey game from Fazed. Huh. Underneath the tree, we don't see anything growing. And if you think, oh, why is that? Uh, well, there's no light. Plus the leaves, well, the needles make it a little acidic. I love those. Let's take a closer look. trip. Oh, okay. Poop on a stick. Poop on a stick? Yes. Is it real poop? Nope. It's just called poop on a stick. If you've gone to the Sobeys at Meadowbrook, you see this on a lot of the trees. In fact, a lot of the trees in the neighborhood seem to be infected with this fungus. Poop on a stick, otherwise known as black knot fungus. Oh, this is fun. Should I run and go over? No, <laughs> I'm not. I'm going under. Oh, but there's some more of those gorgeous beetle trails. So this is evidence that life has been here. So we've seen footprints, holes in a tree, and trails that an animal had made. Super fun. Okay, under. I'm listening for any other birds, but I don't hear any. Wow. I haven't seen the water this high for a long time. I was gonna go back that way. Guess I won't. Some years in the fall, this has been bone dry and we've been able to walk all the way up the creek. So we see that the water levels change during the year. Look, it's all the way up to the picnic table. Beautiful habitat. There's another little pond. Now, if you look here, there's a little clearing where there's no trees growing. You notice all the trees above are reaching in to this little empty meadow because they all want the sunshine. So this is competition. These trees are all competing for sunlight. The way they do that is they just reach right over where they can get it. Now, if you can't reach, then you grow taller. I've been watching this little spruce tree for the last few years and it is trying to grow as tall as it can. So notice it's not growing out very wide near the top, right? Because it's got to get taller than the trees around it so that it is getting sunshine. So every year it grows tall and skinny. And as soon as it gets tall enough, then it'll be the leader of the forest. Oh, there's another butterfly. And get dizzy. All right, now 
we think of spruce versus pine, do you see how each of these leaves is attached singly? Spruce needles are singly attached and when you break them, they smell so good. They release their oils. Here, smell. There's some Saskatoon bushes over here, but of course, no Saskatoons yet. Ah, aspen poplar. See those tall, slim, gray trees that kind of go straight up? That's an aspen poplar. And their leaves are little heart-shaped ones that flutter. My dad used to call them whispering aspen, because when the wind blows a little bit, it's like they're telling you secrets of the forest. See that red color? Some kind of red tree. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I would say red willow, but I'm not sure. Oh, now this is nice. These are berries, or rose hips again, from the wild rose, but obviously they're not as dried out as the other one. There we go. See how sparkly they are? That's just their wrinkled skin. If we open one up, really it's seeds, but that jelly, oh, oh no, it um, makes very nutritious uh, snack. Speaking of nutritious snacks, I think we see a little evidence. Um, that's part of a bird that got eaten by I'm guessing another bird or coyote or something. So we see evidence of predation. Something ate it and left that, sorry, moving the camera, uh, left this, I don't know if it fell, might have fallen. I'm not gonna touch it, might have fallen. So you can see that it is part of a bird that got eaten by something else. Used to be some nice mushrooms over here. Oh, no, no. I saw a bright color, but it's a Tim Hortons cup. Oh, there's lots of garbage here. It's too bad. All right, anything new here? Uh, oh, there's a lot of poop on the stick. And that whole thing, the black knot fungus. Poop on a stick. Oh. Lots of it, jeepers. Here's our big cottonwood tree. Another one, big old beasts. All right, let's go a little further. Check out the caraganas. Notice what we see right now is, oh, do you hear the geese? We see a lot of grass right now. It won't take long before the dandelions take over. Can you see that? The geese are back. Now in here, oh, look at that nest. Wow, that's not very high. From predators, I guess they feel pretty safe here. The tree is not that tall at all. Mm, it's such a beautiful day. So look at this tree, <laughs> trying to grow out towards the sun and get as tall as it can, as fast as it can. Here we've got caraganas and mountain ash. There's another aspen poplar. And there, two things you might say, well, that's the LRT. Ah, but that's not where I'm going. I'm going to that clump right there. You might say, well, 
That doesn't look like anything. Hey, your tax dollars paid for that. That, believe it or not, is a city of Edmonton naturalization site where they are trying to reintroduce some shrubbery and some trees that are native to this area. So they did this a couple years ago. and We've been watching to see what actually survives. This tall grass, as soon as, you know, spring cr comes and the grass starts to grow again, uh, makes it pretty hard for these little shrubs. But I guess if they're tough enough, they are surviving. So the ones with the little silver, little silver ribbon uh, are put there on purpose. So there's one. Okay, you're doing okay. You're doing okay. So some of them are starting to take hold and I guess they have to be tough enough. So this is a little naturalization area where humans are trying to do something good and put some biodiversity back. Now, here we go. I'm gonna get as close as I can before somebody shushes me away. No trespassing, no problem. I won't get that close. Now, this fence does keep animals and people from going in and getting exposed to dangers. Then it also breaks up their ability to find food or escape a predator. Imagine if I was a deer and right now a bunch of coyotes came, a coyote, um, where am I gonna go? I've got a fence over there, fence behind me, fence over there, I'm kind of fenced in, <laughs> get it? Uh, so it does break up habitat and we call that habitat fragmentation. Now when the LRT is done, I don't know what they're gonna do with the fence. They may leave the ravine available for wildlife to go through. I really don't know. I don't think a road's gonna go under it. But anyway, so we've fragmented or broken up the habitat of like the deer and the rabbit and the coyotes that wander through this little mill creek or Wagner Creek. Oh, you know what? I've been teaching here 32 years and I never went across this little bridge. It's so exciting. Oh, I hope, it, hope it's strong enough. So what have we seen? About five different kinds of trees, some shrubs, some ground cover, some of the moss, some grasses. We've seen evidence, hold on, it's a bit slippery. Okay. Evidence of human impact, evidence of life that leaves its information, uh, leaves evidence behind without actually seeing the living creature. Oh, this is cool, hold on. See all those little, don't fall. Those little mouths, those little slits are actually lenticels so that the tree can breathe, not only through the leaves, because there's no leaves right now, but through the bark. That was grade 10. Oh, and look at that. That white stuff, that is not paint. That is another kind of microbial growth. So we've seen gray, orange, white, black forms of uh, like fungus and decomposers. Don't slip. This is beautiful. I'm pretty sure these are called burls. And if you made a table out of it, it would be gorgeous. Look at the moss on that old tree right there. It's beautiful. Uh, there's one more tree I wanted to show you. It is on this side. Hmm. Um, 
going to stop the video for a minute because I think I have to backtrack a bit to get there. Oh, look. <gasps> look up there. Yikes. Ah, what the heck. I'll just keep going this way. See if I can find it and get there. If I fall down the hill. So if you're able to go for a walk, number one, get your parents' permission. Number two, go with a little group of people who are considered in your bubble at this point in time. It's really beautiful back here. You might say beautiful, there's nothing growing. Wow, we can just see like the, the skeleton. Right? It's like lo looking at the bones. Oh, look at those trees. They have that same kind of lumpy burrow. It does not look normal. Now, is it dangerous? I don't know. There's another nest. You can see so much more before the leaves come up. Oh, I am stuck. Oh well, let's keep going this way. Now, if you think what else lives here, squirrels, chipmunks, all kinds of little beetles and crawly things. Well, that's pretty big. Okay, so we would have ants, beetles, snails and slugs. Hold on. Oh, jeez. Okay. Now we haven't seen any birch trees. We have, I think, maple, elm, ash, poplar. Ooh, in fact, look at all those little helicopters there. Those are called maple keys. If you throw them up in the air, they spin like a little helicopter. Each one has a tiny seed. Inside. <gasps> I didn't know what that was. It's not an animal. Wow, we can see what that elements have done to this little forest ravine. A lot of the trees, the old ones, are knocked down. But look at these. They're kind of growing, almost like, well, almost. They are growing along the ground so that they can access the light over there. Bravo. Well done. Very innovative. Never give up. You can do it. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, there's some little pine cones. Sorry, spruce cones. Just think of seed dispersal. Some plants just send runners under the ground. Some drop seeds. Oh, I think this is. Is this the tree I'm looking for? No. But it does have some of that shelf fungus. Nah, not good enough. green from the moss. Oh, now here, it's all kinds of lichen. Try and hold still. You see the shapes are leafy. So we've some, oh, look at that. 
I've seen some that are kind of tubes, very frilly. Ah, okay, there's the tree. And I'm, oh, look at this. Hmm. Human impact. Now really, does this cause a problem? I don't know, it's metal, it'll rust. Does it provide habitat? I guess it catches debris and look, that debris changes into soil. So all the debris that would have been trapped here as dead leaves, eventually turns into beautiful, rich, nutritious compost. This is what I wanted to show you. Look at that. The whole tree. All the way up. It's covered with bells. They are getting their nutrients from the tree itself. Are they like? How are they even stuck there? Let's just take one. Oof. Wow. Oh. They're bone dry. If we can look at where it attaches. Huh. Interesting. Oh, and look underneath them. they are eating the tree and hopefully we see the branch oh yeah <gasps> look at this so this branch here obviously fell against the big tree but the fungi are growing all around it and actually supporting that branch and starting to just snuggle up and hold it so this I can move it but the fungus are growing around it to hold it in place. How cool is that? Uh, the answers vary. Look at that. See? Fungus is growing and say, I got gotcha. you. You might be having tough times right now, but I got your back. Look at that. Little species. Oh, gosh, that's beautiful. It's just beautiful. All the way down. Mm, that's the main things I wanted to show you. No coyotes, that's good. Poop on a stick. Want to see it up close and personal? There it is. Black knot fungus. Oh, now we talked about competition. Look who's going to be king of the castle right there. Good old spruce tree. If you look at the bottom, right here, uh, nothing, 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 nothing. Greenery, greenery, and I'm getting as tall as I can so I can be taller than everybody else so I get the sunshine. Good job. Good job, spruce tree. Now, you might wonder, how do birds call to each other with all the noise from the LRT? Well, I'm sure it causes problems. Oh, look at this. Wow. I mean, that's how they communicate with each other. So it must make it tricky. We saw a butterfly, a little fly in the water. Talk to you about the Daphnia. 
thought I'd see more birds. I did see some ducks in the water, but they swam away. You can see these trees starting to bud out. Bud, not butt out. Bud. All the new growth. You can see it's a different color. It's a golden coppery color compared to the greenish gray. Let's see if we can get close to that nest. Might be abandoned. There it is. So it's not very focused. Crow or magpie? I don't know. We see competition for light as plants lean in towards the meadow. We see competition for light as the trees try and get taller than the trees around them. Even on the ground, they're competing for resources. Now, obviously that tree has been cut down. So I think the city came in after that big storm a couple years ago and some trees that were precarious, they were cut down. Ooh. Oh, this poop on a stick. It's disgusting. Speaking of poop, I've been looking on the ground for coyote poop and I haven't seen any. Came out this morning to show this. A coyote pellet that has been broken up a bit that I found last year in this area. But when I was out here, I found this that I missed on my walk previously. So, who do this poo? You know who do this poo? I don't know. We'll have to check my book and see who do this poo. And if you look what's inside, uh, hair and grass, things that the coyote could not digest. So, now where is this? Well, right here. By the recently naturalized area. So I imagine the coyote just walks along this path, checking things out, looking for mice and voles. Uh, we saw one last night. But I guess we would also possibly see like bird poop, rabbit poop. Oh, these are the little helicopters. So let's see if I can make them do what they're supposed to do. That was fail. Okay, let's take one. Too hard. Do it yourself. The seed is inside. Inside that part. This is the carrier that helps them travel far on the wind. Uh, that little spruce tree's trying to get as tall as it can. And we're back to the flooded bridge. Let's see if I can see those ducks. No. Now, is this creek moving? Uh, it's mostly stagnant, which means not moving, but it's moving a little bit does flow but it's slow flow oh willows okay so this big tree right there is like grandmother willow so the willow trees if you look they grow right where it's extremely wet near the edge of the water and they also have long skinny branches and long skinny leaves and if you want to make a weave a basket you would use willow because of that we're just about done. Nature's trying to gobble up that table. There's those maple keys, key, K-E-Y. That's what you call those little helicopters. So 
an old cottonwood. I'm gonna show you the anthills. I'm sure they're very busy already. Okay. So, oh, that's some other kind of berry. Oh yeah. You see the ants are busy crawling all over. If you can imagine this whole place underneath is crawling with ants. All their little tunnels and <gasps> oh yuck. Okay. Do you know what made this track? Not water mice. So when this was covered with snow in the winter, mice were able to run underneath the crust of snow. Look, they ate the grass right down to the roots. That's disgusting. It's like, where are you going, buddy? Right? Turn left. No, I said turn right. Go back. I forgot my glasses at home. So these little mouse trails. Hmm, where did that go? Well, maybe some of them got eaten by coyotes. When coyotes hunt in the winter, they can actually hear the mice running under the crust of snow. They break through the snow and then they try and grab a mouse. These were all planted a couple years ago by Mr. McMillan in a program called Roots for Trees, where a bunch of elementary school kids came out and planted all these trees in the meadow part. So we've got some Saskatoon, we have some lodgepole pine, we have some aspen poplar. Oh, now if we go down here, we can see the remains of cattails. In French, they're called canoe. Um, you can think of them as reeds. See anything else in the water? Hmm. What's that stuff floating on top? I don't think it's frog eggs. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Wait, is it? I don't think so. Just bubbles, just bubbles. But we do have frogs in this ravine, for sure. So the little gelatinous glob of eggs. Oh, there's some pussy willows. I don't know if you can see them on this. The little white, there we go. The little white fuzzy tips at the end of each of the branch where it's budding. Well, we're almost there. We weren't attacked by a coyote. Didn't need my stick. There's no person. Oh, this is interesting. See that white stuff? Snow mold. Some of you are allergic to that. Is there a crow? Where are you? Oh, magpie. You see it flying there? So for birds, all I saw was a little wren, magpie, and some ducks and geese. Oh, wow, geez, that's four already. All right, we're back at where we started. A little field trip for those of you who are stuck in the house. So what do we see from last time? Still see the poop on the stick, black knot fungus. You see a hole in the tree, potential habitat. I don't know if you can hear. Maybe it's rocks, I think it's ducks. No ice is melting, that'll scare me this time.
a snail. Look. See that? A little snail. Oh, my feet are getting wet. Okay, you're ready to go, buddy. Come on. Oh, it's hiding. I'd probably hide too. It's like, leave me alone. Come out of your little hole. Come take a peek. Nope, not taking a peek today. Oh yeah, come on. Come check it out. See what's happening. There we go. Let's see if it's safe. I'll put you in the shade. Maybe it won't scare you so much. There we go. Yep, just slide right along there. Don't worry, I'll put you back right away. Leaving a little trail of slime as you go. Ugh, that's probably enough. Okay, bye. Ducks eat snails, by the way. It's good, ugh. <laughs> Should've worn boots. It's a good source of calcium by eating the shells. Okay. Let's see if there's fresh tracks. Another evidence that something's been by here. Not bear size, so I'm not worried. I would say coyote or dog. Note to self. Where's my big stick? Ooh, something happened here. Let's see if I can be super sneaky. Sure, Chad. Wonder what they're even saying. Six feet apart. Let's see if I can see them from the other side. <laughs> Sounds like it's coming from everywhere. Oh, they must be very well camouflaged. Well,
the heck? I don't think it's frogs. It's frogs. I don't see any ducks. Typical frog sound. I see bubbles. I wish I could see them. the little blips. Let's just sit here. See if we can see anything. This is one of the trees that Macmillan and the group planted. This is a pine tree. Oh, look at that little tiny pine cone. And we can see that the leaves or needles are in pairs, in twosies. Spruce are single, pines are at least a pair of needles stuck together. And we can see that it had to grow, what, I'm naked, it had to grow tall 
and it lost a lot of the growth at the bottom and it's sending all the energy to the top so it can grow taller than the grass which of course now is flattened from the winter a giant ant hill oh the whole school is built on an ant hill and are they busy let's see are you busy there buddies oh yeah <gasps> Everybody's singing. It's, it's a party tonight, boys and girls. The evening chorus. Living things sometimes have it hard. Look at these, living on a rock, exposed to the rain and the sun and the wind and the heat and the cold. My gosh, Thor, they have it tough. We call these pioneer species. The very first teeny tiny microorganisms and macroorganisms that grow on a rock and slowly they break it down with some of their acids and the rock gets little divots in it and water fills it up and dust and then bigger and bigger things can grow. But for you gotta start somewhere. And here's to you, you pioneers. Maybe if we come back in a thousand years, this pillar of concrete will just be a pile of soil. Maybe it'll be covered over, eaten away. So most of the trees in the ravine are spruce, but this one is a pine tree. Oh, and they always smell so good. And if we look at the needles, sure enough, not singly attached but in little pairs. And again, the inside is quite dead. Well, it's not dead. I dropped the leaves on the inside, or needles, because there's really no resources. They send the resources to the new growth at the ends of the branches. So this is the one birch tree I found, but this birch tree, um, as all birch trees, been dying off from the top. So if you ever plant a birch tree in your yard, just be aware that it'll die off from the top down. You'll have to cut sections off, 
as the tree ages. Now the last couple years in Edmonton, we've had a big problem without, oh, look at this in there. Wow, that would be an awesome place. Something jumped out right now. Oh. Awesome, awesome problem with a beetle, uh, a bronze birch boring beetle that gets in the trees, and you recognize the little, they call that a D shaped hole. The beetle goes right into the juicy part underneath the bark, and they stop the flow of nutrients, and it damages the tree really been really hard on the trees um, they are sus exceptionally susceptible when it's dry so birch trees take a lot of water so if you're going to plant a birch tree in your yard uh, plant it where it gets a lot of water uh, i love birch trees because of the bark it kind of peels off Let's see if i can find one here Kids, we would peel this off and write notes on it. Paper bark, paper birch. So there's the, the one birch tree I have found in this ravine and it's pretty dead, but still providing habitat and nutrients 